is, Mabel. June the 16th, 1976. Show his lordship in, Mabel. Introducing Mabel, the robot housemaid. Begin the day with Abel Mabel. She'll wake you at your preset time. She'll bring your morning tea brewed just how you like it. Take your time about rising. She'll run your bath to exactly the temperature she knows you like. While you're in the bath, she'll make your bed and lay out clothes for yet another day free from household drudgery, free from time-wasting chores like vacuum cleaning. Unlike human housemaids, Mabel never tires, never grumbles, never takes a day off. Your shoes gain a new sparkle with Mabel's patient, loving care. Carelessness is unknown to Mabel. She's programmed with built-in reliability. Priceless sculpture, Mabel can be trusted to dust it. She's also a Cordon Bleu chef. She'll cook what you like the way you like it. The only chef who's equally happy about cooking and washing up. Ironing, forget it. Leave it to Mabel with her computer understanding of textiles. Dog walking can be a drag. Let Mabel do it. She loves animals. She'll do your shopping, too, and more economically with her analysis of market trends. Let Mabel check that bill from your Paris dress designer. Not only is she good at figures, she remembers them for next time. She's great at a party. Her cocktails are classical, and it's safe to drink and drive, for she also computes your blood alcohol level. With radar and sonic sensing, she's both babysitter and burglar alarm. Free your wife from domestic slavery. Let her command her own slave at the touch of a button. Give her Mabel, whose head not only warms the teapot, but is cool enough for the most advanced electronic thinking. Mabel, the multi-fingered robot whose hands combine the strength of a gorilla with the sensitivity of a watchmaker, equally adept at embroidery or lifting a ton weight. Eyes like a hawk, radar, sonic sensing. What other robot has such a combination? She's economic, too, plugging herself in to use less than 10 shillings electricity a day. Mabel, available at all good computer stores for only 500 pounds. Mabel will make 1976 a real leisure year. Buy Mabel now. You may think that this is a wild pipe dream, the idea of a robot housemaid. Well, it isn't. And in order to prove this, I've made this half-scale model of what I would regard as the necessary working parts of a real robot of this type. The problem is that it has to be able to do all kinds of jobs in an ordinary home, and it has to have a computer and a memory to follow out this work. So it has to have feet that can walk about, take it about within the house, and that can also carry it upstairs to do work on the first floor as well as the ground floor. These feet are climbing a slight incline of steps, but could well be adapted for even steep stairs. Already this device is being considered for carrying thalidomide children who can't walk and we have given it two hands on the end of arms which can hold objects and move them about. Picking up a ball seems a simple maneuver, but when the same hand has to pick up a needle from a smooth surface, it needs a more cunning design. 
The engineer's problem is to rationalize the complexity of our human hands. But we've all wished at times that we had three hands. So we give the robot a third hand and give it this power of rotating continuously in either direction and this grips round objects. This hand can not only grip and turn a screwdriver, its fingers sense when they touch and stop closing. Even an egg can be gripped without crushing. Such hands may be mounted on telescopic arms or perhaps above another stair climbing device like this. It looks primitive, but so did the first motor car. And this walks on the level as well as downstairs. The robot will have to see where it's going, and Professor Thring has designed this firefighting device, which not only sees but spots the fire, goes to it and puts it out. All the technological problems of developing the domestic robot can quite definitely be solved. There's only one outstanding problem, and this is which would cost about a million pounds to develop the first working prototype, and we haven't got the million pounds. At first sight, this may seem a lot of money to you, but when you compare it with the thousands of millions of pounds spent on the space race, I think that puts it into its proper perspective. If we had the million pounds, we could produce this complete working prototype in about 10 years. And after that, it could be sold to every family in the world for about the same cost as a family car. I consider that the United States have established such a lead over us on computers that I don't think we'll really catch up. And our best policy is to leapfrog ahead of them by doing research on something they haven't even begun to work on. And I submit, that the domestic robot is just the kind of problem we ought to be working on in this country.